your point is an elephant. <laughs> Hi guys, good morning, welcome back to the channel. Really lovely to see you again this morning and thank you for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, then please don't forget to subscribe by clicking the link below and don't forget also ring that bell and uh, you'll be notified immediately as soon as we post a new film. Probably one of the most commonly asked questions when you're out there shooting, what cartridge are you using? So cartridges, what are they all about? Do they make a difference? And should you be picking and choosing, using the same one, what, you sh what should you be doing with a cartridge? What, which one should you choose? So guys, cartridges, as you are probably are well aware, come in a variety of different colors, brands, uh, shot sizes, wad types, etc., etc. The idea of what I wanted to do today was really just to sort of put it out there and get, get sort of some information to more of the uh, newer guns and the newer shooters in regards to uh, choosing a cartridge and the reasons why I choose a certain type and other guns choose another type. So uh, the difference between cartridges in, in brief is that you've got three different types currently readily available on the market. You've got plastic wads, fiber wads, and you've got the new Eco wad, which is now uh, something that is really taking hold of the market. Ely Zenith have just brought out their new uh, Pro Eco. Uh, you've got Game Ball who've got a similar product, a uh, Bio Eco, I believe they're calling it. Um, but what I wanted to do really was to start with the plastic uh, and we can work our way backwards through the different styles. So plastic cartridges have been around forever and a day. Uh, unfortunately, not particularly very eco-friendly due to the fact that plastic is uh, a bane of, uh, of the earth at this current stage. Um, so, you know, plastic doesn't decompose. It is going to hang around for a long time. Um, most of the clay grounds you'll find are still using plastic and that's where you'll use most of your plastic cartridges uh, or your plastic wadded cartridges, should I say. Um, moving on to the fibre. Fibre has uh, been um, sort of a mainstay of the game uh, shooting world for a long time um, and everyone tends to uh, want and specify that you have to use fibre when you're shooting game. Uh, fibre is, uh, is a felt type of wad. Uh, game board do do a wool wad in actual fact that um, uh, doesn't smell particularly great when it's shot but um, it does the same thing and it does decompose which is why fibre is uh, one of the mo more popular uh, level, uh, elements of wad. Um, we then move on to what is ultimately um, an eco wad, which is new um, and has been in, in the process of design for some years now, but this year has really come out in force. Uh, Ely Zenith have brought out their Pro Eco and Game Boy have also brought out their uh, Bio Eco. And the idea behind that is it is um, a form of uh, wad that is actually water soluble. So the concept is that ultimately once you've shot your cartridge, once that wad's gone out and it hits the ground and it's lying around after 24, 48 hours of the rain on it, etc., etc., the hope and, uh, and what it should be doing is then it should be decomposing. So ultimately it leaves nothing behind. So cartridges, how do they look? As you can see, um, different colours, different heights, uh, slightly different heads of brass and so on and so on. So let's start with the colours. Um, it used to always be that the colours represented the, the bore of the gun, so red would always represent that you were shooting with a 12 bore and obviously other colours for other, other types of, uh, of bores. It doesn't actually work like that anymore now and a lot of the manufacturers now are using multitudes of different colours for both uh, 12 bore and for 410s, uh, 20s, 28s, 16s and so on and so on. So colours really is more to the fact of really the brand. So, you know, Game Ball tends to be more black, Ely's, um, the Zenith is the Zenith is a green colour, and so on and so on and so on. Um, so moving on from the colours, um, let's look at cartridge length. Now this is probably something that we do need to probably consider and take into account a little bit more than something like colours and, and, the, and the heights of brass tops and so on. So um, cartridges come ultimately um, in sort of three lengths. You've got a 65 mil, something like that. Um, you've got something then which is a 67 mil, something like that, which as you can see is just a tad higher. And then you move on to something which is a 70 mil, which again is very, very slightly higher again. Now, the important factor is here is that obviously is making sure you've got the right cartridge for the right chamber. So if you've got something like a 65 chambered gun, you don't want to be putting a 70 in it. 
Um, however, um, if you have got a 70 gun, which most modern guns are 70 millimeter chambered guns, then you can use the 65, the 67, and the 70 in that gun. Um, my advice would always be is if you've got a 70 mil chambered gun, buy a 70 mil chamber, uh, buy a 70 mil cartridge. It, it, you know, it doesn't make a difference um, from a point of um, a cheap, it, the one's cheaper, one's more expensive, but it, it's, it's just having the right cartridge for the right chambered gun. So in my opinion, always go for, uh, if, with, a, with most modern guns, a 70 millimeter chamber, go with a 70 millimeter cartridge. Okay, so moving on from uh, color and size, we then move into uh, the caps, the tops. Now, um, as you can see, there are again, some varying different lengths um, in, the, in, the, in the cap top lengths, um, just in those three cartridges alone. All three are different. Um, they aren't actually brass. I mean, those two, as you can see, are, are a silver in colour. They're a non-ferrous metal, and this one obviously is the is a brass coloured one. It's not actually brass. It's still a non-ferrous metal with a brass coating on it. The reason for the different heights, um, predominantly, is to assist with the uh, ejection. Um, however with technology the way it is and with design the way it is i think some of that these days is is very much um not really beneficial i think it's more uh, personally for me i believe that you know if you look at a cartridge with a longer a longer cap on it i think it's a prettier cartridge um a lot of the manufacturers do say that by putting the longer cap on there what it actually does is it assists in delivering uh, a better energy uh, certainly with heavier loads. Um, now, I haven't actually done any pattern testing with that philosophy in mind, um, but I have heard that um, certainly with a heavier load and a longer cap, um, there is a lot more energy behind the behind the shot. So we've looked at the colours, um, we've looked at the uh, wads, uh, we've looked at the um, design of the cartridge and the caps. So let's just talk briefly about the weights of, of, of cartridges. So now, most cartridges in the UK, when you're shooting clays, you really are shooting somewhere between uh, something like a 28, seven and a half. Now, the 28 is the grammage and the seven and a half is the uh, shot size. Now, um, most cartridges, once you start going into the game side and you start shooting game, they start to get a little bit heavier on the grammage and the shot size gets smaller. And the reason behind that is obviously um, you want clean kills when you're um, shooting game, uh, a clay, uh, you know, one one small pellet will just chip it, and that's enough to get you a score. Um, you know, in the field, the last thing you want to be doing is winging birds. Um, you want to be showing that you're giving them a clean kill, humanely kill them, and that they fold up nice and ni nice and, and straightforward. So, if you look at something like an Ely um, fiber, for example, this is an Ely Select. Now, as you can see, we've got 24 grams, seven and a half. So this is quite a light cartridge, as in the grammage, and the seven and a half is the shot size. And as you can see here, you've got the size of the actual of the chamber that it's been made for, which is a 67 millimeter. Um, that's a fiber cartridge. So again, that could be used on a game day. Um, if we look at then something like um, the Game Ball Dark Storm. Now, I've shot circa about a thousand of these last season. Um, and I have to be honest, I bought these on the basis of um, a very close friend of mine who is a massive advocate of Game Ball. And he kept telling me all the time, buy Game Ball, you've got to, got to move to Game Ball. Hand on heart, I've shot a thousand of these. And these are a super quick cartridge in regards to the feet per second. Uh, this one itself is a 28 gram six, which is a great early partridge um, cartridge. Uh, again, it's a 70 mil. Personally for me, uh, it didn't work for me. Um, I didn't have the confidence with it. Um, I don't think it gave me the, the, the element of, the, uh, of kills as cleanly as my normal cartridge and I did feel it left a lot of black in the in the chambers. We then move on to something um, again which is uh, a game ball cartridge, uh, a Grouse Extreme, uh, specifically made for the grouse uh, shooting um, season. This is a 29 gram. Um, now this is a five and a half which is quite a rare sort of size really so you've got an, uh, quite a light lightish load in regards to the 29 gram but obviously with it being a five and a half gram from a pellet uh, shot size, you've got quite a lot of impact there uh, and, and a really good uh, ability to have some nice clean kills. Obviously then we move up to something like an Ely VIP game, again is a fiber cartridge. Uh, this is a 32 gram six. So again, 32 grams of a six shot. And it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. The odd one out in all of this is the Ely Grand Prix. 
Now, these are actually, um, this is, although this is a 30 gram six, this is a, a game cartridge again. This is actually a paper cartridge. So whereas you'll see all of these are plastic and you've got the plastic case on there, this is actually a paper cartridge. So this is completely um, um, dissolvable, completely bio-friendly, uh, completely eco-friendly. Um, again, smells amazing when they're shot as well. So how does a cartridge work? All cartridges are made up of four components. Uh, primer, powder, wad and shot. Different types of powder um, will determine the speed and the velocity of the shot that's, uh, uh, that, that, you, that you choose. However, um, that's possible for another film as what I want to really concentrate on today is the difference between the wads. You will note that some of the cartridges have longer brasses um, than others. This is really, as I've already said, just to help with the energy and the ejection uh, of the heavier loads. Obviously, we've been through the wads, we've been through the, uh, the shot sizes, we've been through the plastic over the papers, we've been through the brasses. What I want to do now is I'm gonna cut a few of these up. I'm gonna cut a plastic one, a fiber, and a, one of the new eco uh, wads up, so you can actually have a really good look and see what's inside. So as you can see, we've now got the three main types of cartridge. We've got a plastic, a fiber, and the eco wad uh, here. What I've actually done is I've actually already cut these open so you can actually see how these cartridges um, are put together. So obviously you've got your primer, which is in the end, which obviously is the bit that the hammer hits. That ignites the powder, which you can probably just see behind here. This is then the start of the wad, and this is the wad here, which then holds onto this cut. Now on plastic um, cartridges, plastic wadded cartridges, you do tend to find that they have the cup, which holds obviously all of the shot. So if I now just open this up, Get rid of all that shot. So obviously we've just emptied that out. So what we've actually got in there is 28 grams to seven and a half, and you can see how small that shot size is. Um, and it doesn't look like there's a lot, but uh, obviously when you've got uh, that amount of small little balls flying at you, all you need is one to hit you, and uh, it's, it's a clean kill. So as you can see, the green is the is the powder which has just come out and that is ultimately what your plastic wad looks like and the idea is is that as that comes out of the end of your shotgun uh, as the shot leaves these obviously split open and what you end up with is basically it doing that and that is what you end up with left somewhere on your uh, clay ground which again is uh, obviously not uh, very eco-friendly shall we call it so if we then move on to the fiber again if we just empty out that the shot and then we'll just cut the end off this let me shoot that out Uh, again, this is a 24 gram seven and a half, so it's the same shot size as the, pl as the plastic one that we've just opened up, but obviously a lot less shot um, in, 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 in weight. And what you actually got here now, which I can get out, that is ultimately your fiber wad. Um, it's made up of a felt, which as you can see is very easily pulled apart. And obviously once that gets wet, that will literally just decompose, blend into the earth and ultimately disappear, which is a much, much better and far better way of looking after the environment. If we now move on to the Pro Eco Zenith, which is the new water soluble type of wad. Um, again, what you've actually got here, you've got your, your, obviously your brass, your primer in the end, your powder's just hidden down here. Here's your wad. And then here is the same cup that we had on the plastic, if you recall, a very similar design. The difference being is that, whereas that, as you, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that on camera, is actually quite brittle. This is actually very, very malleable, as you can see. So let's empty out that shot. And do that. And that is ultimately the new eco wads that zenith are using which as you can see 
hardly any pressure at all. It's very, very bendy, very, very rubbery in texture. Um, not at all, if we compare the two, like you can see how plasticky that is and how harsh that is. This is very much just like a piece of rubber, really. So there we go, guys. That is your Eco Wad. So what we're going to do is let's pop that in the uh, little jar of water. Let's leave that to soak away. Uh, we'll use the other camera on that just to put a little bit of a time lapse on there so we can show you how long that takes to uh, to dissolve and turn into the squid-like sort of membrane that it does once it starts uh, deteriorating and, and disappearing. So the last thing I just wanted to talk about really um, about these cartridges is, um, as you can see, some of you will be wondering why we've got some copper coloured ones and we've got some non-coloured copper shot. Um, the difference is ultimately these are a copper coated shot and this is something that Zenith uh, or Ely Hawk who produce the Zenith cartridge um, have done with their cartridges. The idea behind the, the copper is that it, it, it ultimately should hold the pattern better. So when you are game shooting, when you are shooting um, you know, live quarry, the idea is the pattern stays tighter, uh, it keeps its shape and ultimately gives you a much better kill, more humane uh, and ultimately a quicker dispatch of your, of your bird. So one of the big things that uh, is important of course is what cartridge, for what month and for what quarry. Uh, one of the major things I think that upsets a lot of guns is the fact that when you get inexperienced guns or guns that are using a far heavier cartridge, far heavier load than they need for the quarry at that time. So one of the biggest questions I think that is always asked is um, are you using the right cartridge and the right load and what size shot are you using and what size shot should you be using for the quarry that you're actually on your uh, driven day. So if we're talking about walked up days, um, you know, a lot of walked up days is a low volume of birds. You're quite close to the quarry when it, it lifts because you're generally having dogs flushing it out. So something like, um, you know, a black gold dark storm, which is a 28.6 uh, or something like a 36 uh, teamed with a quarter and a half choke is absolutely ample for uh, those walked up days. Um, I have to be honest, I've even got colleagues of mine that shoot and on walked up days, they're shooting with things uh, a lot lower than that. They're shooting with things like a 24, uh, seven or a 24, five and a half, similar to the extreme grouse. Um, but again, that's more of a preference. Um, certainly when you move up to those grouse moors, then um, my, my preference on a grouse moor is a 36 or maybe a 35, um, something like the extreme grouse that's been specifically made for grouse shooting. Um, I have to say both the Game Ball Black Gold um, and their super fast uh, Dark Storm as cartridges go uh, are both great but like I've said previously in this film um, I found that on both of those they did leave the barrels um, extremely dirty with plenty of sort of crap left behind um, however again I'm not sure it was achieving uh, the cleanest kills either but that's as I said on a personal preference. Um, when I've shot the extreme grouse, um, they have been extremely, extremely good, got to be honest. Um, a very quick cartridge and a nice cartridge. I think that cartridges can be described in two manners. They're either a snap cartridge or they're a progressive cartridge. What I mean by that is a progressive is more of a sort of a, as you pull the trigger, it's that whoosh and a bang, whereas the snap is that immediate crack. Um, I personally prefer that, that sort of progressive whoosh into the bang rather than the crack. I think it helps with the recoil um, and I just think it's a, it's a nicer cartridge to shoot. Once we start getting into the September and the early partridges, then I have to say my, my cartridge of choice um, throughout the season is the Zenith. Um, so I would move to the Zenith 36, uh, 36 or a 35. Um, once we're starting to get into the end of September and the partridges have been shot out a few times, they're getting a bit wily, um, so they're a bit more, they're a bit more sort of agile, um, that's when I'd maybe go up to the five, but certainly most seasons I, I shoot the September month with a 36 cartridge uh, in the EV Zenith range. Again, quarter and a half choke, it's all you need, it's ample. Once the pheasant season starts, then again, early pheasant, um, birds are a little bit bigger, they tend to have a little bit more plume, a little bit more muscle on them. So just jumping up to a 32.6 uh, cartridge 
um, I find is absolutely ample, um, especially if, if you're in North Yorkshire or Wales, where the birds are not really exceeding much more than 45 yards. And when I say Wales, I'm talking about obviously the non-extreme shoots that are there. Um, obviously, once the season starts to progress, um, and you are sort of halfway through the October month, moving into the, the, the early start of November, then, you know, maybe look at jumping to a 34.6 or again a 34.5 if you're shooting some of those estates where the birds are nice and plump, they've been shot at a lot, um, and, um, you know, you need something just to make sure you're taking those birds down humanely and giving them a good kill. And again, quarter and a half chokes. Um, I, don't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't move away from a quarter and a half. I think that's absolutely ample um, for what you'll, what you'll need um, in those months. Once we get into the start of November and December, as I've said, then we start November really with a 34.5. Uh, maybe if we are shooting some of the um, slightly higher birds, they're a bigger bird, they've got more plume on them, they've had a lot of days um, where they have been shot at, then I might drop to a 34.4. Um, just because that extra little bit of weight just carries a little bit more sort of uh, bang for your buck, shall we call it, and it does just knock them out of the sky a lot easier and give them a much cleaner and more humane kill. The only exceptions I would really say um, in regards to when you really need to get up a little bit heavier on those loads is when you're doing your high bird shoots. So when you're doing the likes of Let Weddigarth, Sweet Lamb, and some of the, 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 the shoots in Wales, down in Devon as well, um, then you might want to jump up to a 36.4. Um, and again, I tend to jump to a 36.4 when I'm in Wales shooting those uh, shoots, purely because, again, it all boils down to I want a humane kill. I don't want to be winging birds. I want a nice, clean kill. Uh, I want to watch the birds fold up. I want to make sure that they're dead before they hit the ground. So, you know, jumping to a 36.4, uh, will, 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 will e easily uh, achieve that for you. And again, you might want to look at your chokes once you start obviously getting into the higher birds. So, you know, you might jump up to a three quarters and a half choke. On some shoots, you might even go to a full and a, and a three quarter. But again, that's, that, that is a personal preference um, as it is with a cartridge. And I think this is the really important factor. Cartridges, it's not about what they are and what they do. It's about what you feel comfortable in shooting. So, you know, I've come across so many guns where, you know, they will ask you the question, what are you shooting? What cartridge is that? And, you know, for me, I always use Ely Zenith, always have done. I'm a big fan of theirs. I believe they give me everything I look for. They give me a com the confidence as a, as a gun when I'm using them. Um, whereas I've come across guns and they've got everything in their bag from a seven and a half through to a three. You know, they've got uh, game ball, they've got Imperial Game, they've got Hull, they've got, you name it, they've got everything in there. And you, you say to them, well, what do you prefer? And they say, well, I just pull out a cartridge and I shoot it. You know, to me, that's that that's not the way it should be done. And, and you know, you should be, uh, in my opinion, you should have something that you enjoy shooting and that is giving you the confidence to shoot. So by choosing a brand and choosing a cartridge that you enjoy, that works for you, gives you clean kills, uh, is consistent in its pattern um, and also you know think about things like recoil and also think about you know now when we've got this new eco wad the other thing to think about as well is you know you, you know is getting involved in and making sure that you're as good to the uh, the environment as you can be cartridges are a very personal thing and i think that's a really uh, important thing to to mention you know there are many a gun out there that will uh, deliberate dissect break down everything from you know what powder's used how, you know what's the feet per second speeds uh, what's this what's that it, it, you can go on forever um, to be honest um, a, a very good friend of mine that is actually a shotgun instructor always used to say to me it's not so much the cartridge it's the nut behind the butt um, that makes the difference so you know find a cartridge you enjoy find a cartridge that gives you the confidence to to make sure you're having a great day and gives you the humane kills and stick with it I hope you've enjoyed today's film. Hope you've enjoyed the information that we've given you. If you have any questions, please do feel free to contact us. Uh, please also do make sure if you're not a subscriber that you do click on the link below. Click that bell, of course, so that you'll get notified when we have a new film there. Please also do follow us on Instagram as well. And feel free to drop us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Take care. We'll see you soon.